I'm more comfortable being long Bitcoin today than I was six months ago. And now we've got an ETF on the way. Bitcoin is in a bull market. Now is the time to solidify your position. If you plan to buy low in this cycle and sell near the top of this cycle, now is the time to solidify your position. In my opinion, billionaire crypto investor Mike Novogratz explains why. Governments love to spend money. In the long run, someone's got to pay for that. And that's why Bitcoin, gold, silver, I put them all in the same bucket. Silver and gold trade great. Bitcoin's got the additional adoption cycle. What drove Bitcoin this year was retail and they continue to buy and they continue to buy. And now we've got an ETF on the way. I'm more comfortable being long Bitcoin today than I was six months ago. Six months ago, it was scary. Now we see the future kind of spilling out. Kind of tongue in cheek. When, when Kelly Evans says she wants a two year at 5%, I go, I, I would just put it in Bitcoin. I'm kidding around, and I, but I sort of feel the same way with the with the Black Rocks and the Charles Schwabs of, of the world. So when I say that Bitcoin's in a bull market, I mean, technically, the lows are in. Very possible we continue to see chop solidation for the rest of the year. And this is the time you solidify your cycle position in this chop solidation when the lows are in, when the bull market's confirmed. New all time highs next year, cycle top 2025. I think many people are going to make the mistake and wait to sell their Bitcoin when they think it's the top. Bitcoin hits 250K, they think about selling. Bitcoin hits 300K, they think about selling. That could be fruitful, but also very risky. I'm planning to scale out as Bitcoin climbs higher and higher, maybe starting at 150K. And of course, my long, long-term goals are maybe four years from now at the next cycle low, I'll buy back in, rinse and repeat. I'll keep you updated on my buy and sell strategy. I've been making videos daily for six plus years now. Make sure you subscribe. We publish a crypto video every day, keeping you informed on the entire market. The mainstream media doesn't cover what we cover. If you want to make money in crypto, I think you should subscribe to us and start watching our videos daily. And it's funny that so many big players are investing in Bitcoin, investing in crypto, and yet so many big players still seem very critical of it. The big question is, is Gary Gensler and his masters still a threat to crypto? Seems like the political elites are still trying to squash Bitcoin entirely. Explain this tension. You got that on one side, big name, people want these ETS. But then you have Gensler and the SEC on the other side. Is Gensler, do you think he's just anti-crypto or anti-exchanges that sort of work unregulated? Because that's the key difference. You think he'd like to take Bitcoin off the table as a, as a financial asset, or does he just want to regulate the way that it's traded? I think it's like this Ripple lawsuit taught us anything, right? Gary has been saying, come in, the rules are clear. The rules are absolutely not clear. The judge just basically said to the SEC, uh, you're wrong. And so, you know, Richie Torres, the congressman from the Bronx, put a beautiful letter out to the SEC to Gensler saying, guys, it's time to come to the table for the White House, for the SEC, for Democrats to sit down with the Republicans and give us some damn legislation so we can get on with life. I don't think Gary inherently hates Bitcoin or hates crypto. He did see an industry rife with a lot of fraud. I do think Elizabeth Warren and the progressive side, for reasons I can't understand, have been anti-crypto. And I think any central bank governor gets nervous about something. You know, Larry Fink went on TV and said, this is going to be the first global currency. Well, Janet Yellen thinks that's her job, right, to defend the dollar as a global currency. And so there is a tension. I like to think of Bitcoin as digital gold, a store of value that keeps the tempers or the, the nerves of central bankers down a little bit. When you start talking currency, they get nervous. But there's that tension there. So what's the bottom line here? What do all crypto investors need to understand? But I think, listen, the cat's out of the bag. Bitcoin's not going away. Like you threw everything you could at it and it's up 80% on the year with interest rates higher. And so the adoption cycle continues. Big ideas are almost impossible to kill, and this is a really big idea. Elon Musk, very pro-Bitcoin, very pro-crypto. He likes Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin. These are the three coins he's mentioned by name. He owns these coins. His company owns these coins. In general, I'm a supporter of, of Bitcoin and the idea of cryptocurrency in general. I do own Bitcoin. Tesla owns Bitcoin. SpaceX owns Bitcoin. And I do personally own a bit of Ethereum and, and Dogecoin, of course. So. Elon Musk just did a major Twitter rebrand to X. 
it seems like crypto is going to be a big part of X. Essentially, if done right, X would serve people's financial needs to such a degree that over time it would become, I don't know, maybe half of the global financial system or some big number. I'm not sure what the number is, but pretty big. It would be by far the biggest sort of financial institution, not really in the way that people are used to thinking about banks, just the most efficient database for the thing that is money, least amount of fraud, everything's real time. And if it involves money in any way, it can be dealt with seamlessly on one location. Think about it like this. Bitcoin produces block after block unaffected. We just reached a major milestone for the network. 800,000 blocks mined since 13, 14 years ago. Bitcoin's halving is less than 40,000 blocks away. This is when supply flow gets cut in half, a major catalyst for price. Taking a look at the broader crypto market at large, money continues to flow in to the quality projects and crypto in general continues to build, get bigger and better. There's a lot of value and there's a lot of things going on in crypto, a lot of quality that wasn't around five, six years ago. The bottom line is 8 billion people will go on chain over the next decade. Crypto adoption will kick into high gear over the next decade, says Coinbase Protocol's lead Jesse Pollock, who predicts the vast majority of people on Earth will come on chain during that span. Quote, our feeling is that there's so much growth ahead of us. There's going to be 8 billion people on chain over the next decade. It's going to be really interesting to see how this space develops over the next five, 10 years. We're gonna keep you informed every day, so make sure you're subscribed. My question to you is, what are your thoughts on WorldCoin? WorldCoin is a VC-backed project that uses iris scanning technology to create a global identity and financial network. It aims to help people participate in the global economy and provide a form of universal basic income, to put it broadly. And the news is that they just migrated to optimism. WorldCoin, the decentralized <coughs> ID and wallet protocol, has migrated its operations to optimism and Ethereum L2 scaling layer. So in essence, this is kind of good for Ethereum. With this move, WorldCoin aims to prepare for its future launch, taking advantage of the scalability features that its deployment on optimism brings, including migrating user accounts and bringing Uniswap support to the world app. And crypto exchanges are lining up to list WorldCoin's newly launched world token, Binance, Bybit, Huobi, OKX, Gate, to name a few. Now, crypto native people like Vitalik are warning that WorldCoin has major issues. It will take years to work. We'll see. The most important thing you can do right now, don't tune out, tune in, get involved. There's a lot of opportunity in emerging bull markets in crypto. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity over the next one, two, three years. I'm positioning myself accordingly. Are you?